Okay, everybody, check it out. We're on question number 28. I can't believe we got that far so fast. I'm um, looking at this question. We're almost there. We're coming around the corner now. So this is where we really want to keep our thinking cap on because we want to make sure we don't make any mistakes. This question says, which instrument would be best to measure the volume of a liquid? Okay, so we're looking for an instrument or a tool. Okay, something that we would use as scientists to measure liquid, okay? Measure is the other key word, and we're looking for volume, okay? We're looking to measure what? Liquid. What are we gonna to use to measure liquid? Well, this is an easy question. All you gotta do is go through the process of elimination. Well, let's look at the first choice. They give us a pan balance. Well, a pan balance looks something like this. And basically what you do is you weigh the size of different objects, okay? So when we're talking about liquid, the last thing we wanna do is pour liquid on a pan balance. Where would the liquid go? all over the place, and then mom and dad would lose their mind. So would your teacher. All right, so that's out. Now, B, a stopwatch. Now, I'm, just, I'm laughing too. I can't even imagine why they would ask us to measure a liquid with a stopwatch. I have no idea, but can't measure it with a watch. Forget that. That's out as well. Back to C and D. What do we got so far? We got a thermometer. Well, we know a thermometer has liquid inside of it. Anybody know what kind of liquid they have inside of the thermometer? You know it, mercury, okay, there you go. Now, hey, mercury also, we can find it in shellfish, all right? So once again, connecting all the issues, okay? Mercury is in shellfish, it's inside of a thermometer, but can we measure liquid? No way. Okay, so that leaves us with the last choice, D, a graduated cylinder, all right? Very fancy science word, okay? Graduated cylinder. The reason they call it graduated is because the levels go up. And what you do is you pour a liquid inside, let's pretend there's liquid inside, and then wherever it stops, you measure it. But quick note from Ken's Excellence, okay? When you're measuring or you're reading a graduated cylinder, you never read the straight line. You always read the curve, okay? And that's the trick to any science experiment. So keep that in mind. When you want to measure volume, particularly liquid, we always use a graduated cylinder, all right?